Greetings, everyone. This is Terry Naturally with another edition of Terry Talks Nutrition. We're here every weekend, same time, same station, so you can join us anytime you like. And we would love to have your family, friends, relatives join us as well. So if you're getting something out of this show, if you're getting some really good tips as how you can be healthier, And if you are getting healthier, and maybe you're reducing your arthritis, or your type 2 diabetes, or you're losing weight, and you're getting off drugs, you want to pass this information on to everyone you know. Because you and I, and your relatives, and your friends, and whoever... It's only up to them and you and I to be responsible for our health. No one else is. The doctor is not responsible for your health. And the time that a doctor sees a patient is six minutes. So what do they care that they do something in six minutes but write out a script for you to take another drug? And drug companies are happy that you're sick. Because that means more sales of drugs. If you're all healthy, that would really deter their growth, their sales, their share market price. But we can put a dent in all that by taking the responsibility and the liability of our own health Every choice we make is either a good choice for our health or a bad choice. And up to now, in this country, mostly, probably you, the listeners, are not, but the general Americans are not doing anything to improve their health. Our country is in very sick condition. And all the Americans in this country are unhealthy. And 98% of all health conditions, disease conditions, are caused by our environment and our choices. So it's important for us to make good choices. And we're trying to share with you good choices. How you can become healthier and better. How you can get off drugs. I'm not telling you to go off your drugs. That's between you and your doctor. If your doctor prescribes a drug, there's a reason for it. I don't know that reason. So I'm not in a position to tell you to go off your drugs. You may not be able to have a good condition if you go off your drugs. Drugs have a place in society. No, not the bad drugs. Not the street drugs. Not all the stuff that's coming across the border. But prescription drugs. I want you off all of them. That is my prayer for you. Get off drugs. Food is your best medicine. So we're always trying to help you understand more about health, nutrition, alternative medicines, so that you have the ability to make better choices. You have more knowledge, more education. You literally do have more education on healthy nutrition than your doctor. That's the absolute truth. All you have to do is listen to one hour of my show and you have more knowledge than your doctor has. Isn't that amazing? What a sad society that we live in. But I'm going to share information with you today and always, every weekend, I'll share with you all kinds of good, healthy information. So today we're going to talk about curcumin. What is curcumin? Well, many of you know what curcumin is, but I'll tell you more today 
that you may not have heard before about curcumin. The Indians in India call it the all-in-one solution. It affects more pathways in the body than any drugs. And it affects all those pathways all at the same time at various levels of those pathways. So it actually helps to improve so many different health conditions. Over 20 to 25 health benefits just from curcumin. A drug cannot do that. A drug is one molecule. And it has to be one molecule because the FDA requires so much substantiation of the drug before it gets on the market because a drug could kill hundreds or thousands of people. And we have seen this in the past where drugs have killed 30, 40,000 people. And even chemo kills cancer patients before the cancer does. That's our best hope for health, for our medical intervention. It's a really not the way to become healthy. And curcumin and all plants contain not only one molecule, but hundreds if not thousands of molecules that affect all those various pathways. A drug can only affect one pathway at a time. Just one pathway, one target. That's what the drug was made for. Just affect that one target. And when you affect one target, all the other pathways that are balanced on that one target now become disturbed and do not work as well because they are thrown out of balance. Kind of like a wheel. A bike wheel with spokes. And you take a few spokes out. That wheel will not run true. So when you imbalance a wheel. You imbalance the pathways. You have consequences to, to deal with. So we'll talk about curcumin today. And then, is it possible that French fries can make you sad? And here's the easier way to become healthier. A really good, easy way to become healthier. And it's free. Just get more sleep. And women... Take your heart health seriously because you have more damage to your heart and a lesser ability to regain your health of your heart than men do. And we'll also give you some help today on how to improve your varicose veins. And we'll talk about an herb that is substantially studied called Bacopa. B-A-C-O-P-A. Bacopa. It's an Indian herb and just a brand new study came out on Bacopa that I think you want to hear about. So don't go away. I have a lot of stuff to cover today. And that hour goes by so, so fast. But we'll tackle as much as we can tackle today and see where we go. Now, when I said curcumin was the all-in-one solution, and it affects multiple, multiple pathways simultaneously at various levels of those pathways, So you've got something more powerful, more effective, and no side effects 
with curcumin. Now, curcumin can improve, reverse, treat multiple multiple sclerosis, MS, psoriasis, colitis, metabolic syndrome, which is five different conditions, all wrapped up into the metabolic syndrome. Gum disease, gingivitis, periodontal disease, cancer, pain, arthritis, diabetes, liver disease, asthma, allergies, Alzheimer's disease, all forms of dementia, depression, and there's more. But actually, for any health problem that you can imagine, you can depend on curcumin. Two of the most powerful herbs for your health overall is curcumin and andrographis. Curcumin affects more pathways, but some of those pathways are not substantially affected. Andrographis, it affects almost as many as curcumin and more powerfully than curcumin. So if you wanted to have a dynamic duel, like Batman and Robin, right? They're going to get the job done. Curcumin and andrographis gets the job done. They both have a powerful effect on cancer. In fact, andrographis is more effective in shrinking animal tumors than curcumin. Curcumin relieves more pain, more arthritis. And agraphis relieves more liver disease. And Alzheimer's disease and dementia. Curcumin relieves more depression. So here we have the most powerful combination. Curcumin and andrographis. Why does curcumin work so well? <clears throat> well, synthetic drugs, prescription drugs, might act on just one pathway, therefore affecting one benefit. Curcumin has been shown to act on at least a hundred, if not a thousand, pathways in the body. Molecular targets, including neutralizing free radicals. Free radicals are caused by chemicals, preservatives, pesticides, excessive sun. All these products of pollution, smoking, excessive a drinking, or alcohol. All of these cause damage to our cells. And in the process, it causes free radicals. Like when you burn coal, you have a residue. You have ashes. Some of these can be really big, what we used to call years ago, clinkers. These free radicals damage our cells, which is the precursor to cancer and all other diseases. If you've seen somebody out in the Arizona desert 
and they've lived there all their life. Their facial skin is wrinkled, dry, sunburned. And if they smoke, it's worse. That's because all the facial skin cells have been affected and dying or they're critically damaged. And if we have that happening internally, we damage all of our cells, they prematurely die, they age faster. So we want to stop free radical damage. And antioxidants neutralize free radical damage. So if you have iron or some metal out in the elements that is not coated or painted, it'll rust. So rusting is the same as free radical damage. So if you paint the metal or cover it with some kind of coating, a sealant, a rubber coating, That's why they paint bridges over and over again because the metal gives out, especially in the north, from salting the roads, salting the bridges. The Golden Gate Bridge is painted over and over and over again without ever ending. When they paint from one end to the other, they start over again because of the salt air, because of the fog, the moisture. The metal is damaged, rusting. Our cells are rusting. So it neutralizes free radical damage, stops free radical damage, stops viral, bacterial, and fungal infections, lowers blood sugar and blood pressure, Protects the liver. Prevents and treats cancer. More effective than drugs. Neutralizing inflammation and relieving pain. And in studies with animals who have cancer, Humans cannot be treated with natural medicines, alternative medicines, herbal products. They can only be treated with chemotherapeutic drugs, radiation, surgery. These are the protocols established by the AMA for treating cancer. And doctors have to stay within the window of that treatment. But in animal studies with human tumors that have been grafted onto the animals, those tumors are treated. And in animal studies, I recall one study that was done at City New City Hope of Los Angeles. New Hope City, I should say. They did a study. Four different groups of animals, all having the same cancer tumors. And they took a single ingredient like curcumin and treated a group of animals. They took grapeseed extract, OPC, and treated a group of animals. They took melatonin and treated the cancer tumors of the animals. And they took andrographis. So they have four studies going on. Each group of animals were treated with a different 
kind of natural medicine. After 21 days, now this is just 21 days, the animal is treated with curcumin, had about 35 to 40 percent reduction in tumor growth in 21 days. The grapeseed extract group reduced the size of the tumors about 40 to 65 percent. The melatonin group was over 50 percent on average. And the endographis group reduced the size of the tumors by 60% in 21 days. So now the two most successful ingredients was melatonin and endographis. So they combined those two in an animal study. Same animals, a same type of animals, I should say. 21 days, but the animals got not only one ingredient, they got both ingredients, melatonin and andographis. After 21 days, the size of the tumors reduced by 90%, 90%. Then they arranged the same kind of study, animal study, animal tumors. And they applied three different cancer drugs individually. And it could not reduce the size of the tumors more than 10%. Melatonin and anagraphis reduced the size of the tumors by 90%. The cancer drugs could not do better than 10%. And there are side effects with the cancer drugs. There were no side effects with curcumin, grapeseed, melatonin, or andographis. And all this without toxic effects as is associated with conventional chemotherapy and radiation. And the all, all four natural ingredients stopped cell, cancer cell formation, the beginning of cancer. So you can use this as prevention. Cancer cell growth and the spreading of cancer. Curcumin can also be used in, in combination with conventional cancer treatments. In fact, all these natural components whether it's curcumin or grapeseed or melatonin or, or endographis. They all can be used in combination with the cancer patient when the cancer patient is receiving conventional cancer treatments. To help these treatments work more effectively. So when you use these natural ingredients along with chemotherapy, there is less toxicity, less liver damage, and the drug can be used in smaller dosages because it becomes more effective. So in some cases we've seen the natural herbal products reducing the cancer, the tumors, by let's just arbitrarily, let's just say 50%. But then when you add it to a drug, together the drug and the natural ingredient reduces the tumors 10, 20, or 30% even more effectively. And curcumin can help reduce the adverse effects of these treatments as well. Less shock, less toxicity to the body. So research on curcumin have been done on cancer of the heart, excuse me, the breast, prostate, 
colon, pancreatic cancer, head and neck cancer, and cancer of the liver. Some new research on curcumin and liver cancer. This is a brand new study by Dr. A.J. Goyle, that's spelled G-O-E-L, and the effects of curcumin on liver cancer cells. There is a new drug put out today by a drug company that has been approved for liver cancer. And they're using this new drug to treat liver cancer in people who can't be treated with surgery or radiation. This drug is not very effective. But that's all the drug companies can come up with. They just can't do the job. About 24% of people who use this drug will see some benefits. And even when it works, the cancer cells quickly become resistant to the drug. Now I have a lot more to talk to you about Dr. Goyle's new study for liver cancer. And I know I've got to take a break in a few seconds for the station to identify itself and for the station to run some commercials. So I don't want to have you miss because this is way, way, way too more too important to miss. This new study is a, a, a blockbuster new study. So I don't want you to miss this. So come on back. I'm Terry Naturally. And this is Terry Talks Nutrition. Welcome back, my friends. We have another portion of our program. We're going to go up to the top of the hour before we say goodbye for the day. But we have a lot more coming your way. A lot more you don't want to miss. Sometimes when I go to meetings or I go to a seminar, even a medical seminar, you know, that's way over my head in most cases. I don't talk about drugs. I don't even know how to pronounce half the drugs they produce. But if I get one idea, that's all it takes. And I'm sure there are a lot more ideas coming your way via this show. And right now, on curcumin and liver cancer. So, a new drug has been developed to treat liver cancer who can't be treated with surgery or radiation. However, the drug is not very effective. Only about 24% of people who use it see some benefits and even when it works the cancer cells quickly become resistant. They run and hide. And they end up being stem cells which will come alive again and then cancer comes back even more aggressive. So Dr. Goyle in one of his studies exposed these drug-resistant liver cells. They're called stem cells to a combination of this drug and curcumin and compare the results to curcumin and the drug used separately. Now the results, as expected, the drug on its own had almost no effect. Had almost no effect. Curcumin alone reduced the number of cancer cells by 50% or more. 
But when combined with the drug, curcumin boosted its effects and the combination of the drug and curcumin wiped out 75 to 85 percent of the liver cancer cells. If you have cancer. This is what you may want to think about. Or you want to keep it in the back of your mind. Or use it as a preventative. It makes really good sense to use curcumin as a preventative. So this is really, really important as to how much of the cancer cells can be killed off with curcumin versus a drug. And it's the best drug they can come up with. They're not doing very well in terms of being able to treat cancer with drugs. So think about curcumin as one of the top anti-cancer natural medicines. Toxic free. Side effect free. No side effects. It's a food that has been used for thousands of years. At least 5,000 years. And it's the number one solution in India today. And when you take a prescribed drug for cancer, from all the research of, from Dr. Goyle, curcumin can be safely used along with the prescribed drug, which makes the drug more effective, makes it less toxic, and saves other organs of the body, and doesn't spread. Now, curcumin can also safely relieve pain. It's an anti-inflammatory. It relieves pain. Where prescription and OTC pain relievers can cause stomach ulcers, increase the risk of heart attacks, and even kill you. Curcumin relieves all types of pain with no side effects, including muscle pain, joint pain, reduces inflammation and pain from osteoarthritis as well as rheumatoid arthritis. It shuts down migraine headache pain. Stops the pain of menstruation and PMS. Stops pain associated with menopause. Stops back pain. Pain from injuries, strains, sprains, and bruises. This is such a valuable herbal medicine. It has been number one medicine around the world for a number of years. But not all curcumin is the same. Not all has been studied. On this special form of curcumin that Dr. Goyle works with, is combined with turmeric essential oil. Because curcumin is fat-soluble. So that means it's much more difficult to be absorbed out of the intestinal tract, across the lining of the intestinal tract, into the bloodstream, where it then can circulate and reach all the cancer cells, all the organs, everywhere in the body, every cell. But that turmeric essential oil is critical to be complex to the curcumin 
to increase the absorption. And it is a very safe and effective method to ensure absorption. And I know some people are trying to do it with turmeric or turmeric. Depends on how you, how you say it. But that only contains 2 to 4% curcumin. So turmeric does not have the ability that curcumin does. And also, curcumin can be combined with other anti-cancer ingredients such as grapeseed extract or boswellia or andrographis, melatonin. These are all very powerful individual ingredients that can be used individually or in a combination. Now of the curcumin, I think a good dosage is about 750 milligrams of enhanced absorption daily. And in some cases, doubling that or tripling that would not be in any way harmful and may get better results. Some people may need a higher dosage. And it's very safe to increase the dosage. I have run into people who have been using nine soft gel capsules of this very powerful curcumin. I ran into a lady several years ago whose son was diagnosed with cancer and she read an article on curcumin and boswellia for the treatment of cancer. But they were special forms of curcumin and boswellia. So she gave her son one capsule, one soft gel of curcumin and one soft gel of boswellia. The doctor could see no difference. So she upped it. And she kept upping it until she got up to nine soft gels of curcumin and nine soft gels of, tum- of boswellia. And the boy was cured of cancer. The doctor said, well, probably he didn't even have cancer. She said, then tell me why, doctor. Why did you treat him for cancer? If you think now he didn't have cancer. This woman has had this boy on nine soft gels of curcumin and nine soft gels of turmeric for years. I suggested she just could lower the dosage since he was doing so well. She said, no way. I have a budget that I can afford the supplements and how how much is life worth? He's my son. I don't care what I spend to make sure that he is healthy. So the dosage can be anything. As high as you want, if you want. If you think you need it. Now, Once in a blue moon, I have seen somebody have diarrhea. But that's hardly a side effect. So many people could probably use a little diarrhea. They're so constipated. But yes, we don't want to have anybody have diarrhea. So you just cut back the dosage. So take it to the point of saturation. Take it to the point where you get diarrhea. And then back off one soft gel. This might be a good way to tailor the amount to take. That means your body is saturated with curcumin.
All good news, right? And all this you can use preventatively as well. But how about this? Can French fries make you sad? Oh my gosh. I see an awful lot of smiling people out there when they're eating French fries. Well, here's a new study that does link French fries to depression. Wow, truly. This is a brand new study that has linked French fries to depression. Researchers looked at patient data from over 140,000 people to analyze their eating patterns and rates of mental health issues. Frequent fried food consumption, especially french fries, was strongly associated with increased risk of anxiety and depression, particularly in young men. 12% increased risk of anxiety and 7% increased risk of depression. Why do French fries have this effect? Well, the researchers noted that French fries contain a compound that is formed in the fries from the high temperature of frying. It's a food processing contaminant formed when the starch of the potato, the french fry, is cooked at very high temperatures. And then in part two of this study, the researchers showed in animal models that this compound that is formed from the high temperatures of cooking the fries, actually induced behaviors in animals. The same similar anxiety and depression that was found in humans was found in animals as well. French fries. I bet you there's a zillion pounds a year sold of french fries. Wonder why we're depressed? Wow. Now, remember I said we are in charge of our own health? Well, here's a way to get better health. Easier way to get better health. And doesn't cost you a cent. Just get more sleep. Sleep is essential for health. While you sleep, your body is recharging. What do you do at night? You put your phone on charge. You put your iPad on charge. And then we stay up all night. Well, why do you charge your phone? Why do you charge your iPad? Because you need more energy. You need more ability to use the equipment. And while we sleep, our body takes care of muscle repair, protein synthesis, tissue regrowth, or just growth, a balanced hormone release. So here are some side effects of not getting enough sleep. Too little sleep can have significant negative health effects. In a study with healthy volunteers, immune cell production. We need our immune system, right? Because our immune system prevents the attack on our health by viruses. Bacteria, fungi, so we can prevent viral infection, bacterial infection,
fungal infection, but we have to have a healthy immune system. The immune system of our body is like the army of a country. With all the tools that the army has, it's there to protect our environment. And our immune system, with the right amount of tools, the killer cells, the B cells, all the tools that the immune system produces will prevent destruction of our healthy cells. But unfortunately, in a study with healthy volunteers, immune cell production, we need immune cells. They dropped by 70% when sleep was restricted to four hours for just one night. Just one night of four hours dropped the immune cell production by 70%. So you went with four hours last night. Let's just say. Probably a friend did. And the next day came into contact with somebody with infection. They're not going to be able to be healthy enough to prevent that viral infection. Children with short Sleep duration are almost 90% more likely to develop type 2 diabetes. And now this is a whopper. Sleeping five or fewer hours a night increases the risk of death. Death from any cause by roughly 15%. So how do you get better sleep? Well, I, I know for sure how I do. I get up very early in the morning. I get up usually about quarter to four. So I'm in bed by 7, 7.30. And I do, I, melatonin is my go-to for a really great night's sleep. So I take 10 milligrams of chewable melatonin at sundown. Why sundown? Why not an hour or two before bedtime? Because our body works on a circadian rhythm, light and dark. So sundown is the first initial phase of darkness. And so that's when we should take it. Not an hour before bedtime. You, you might go to bed at midnight and you take it at 11 o'clock. You miss all the benefits or a lot of benefits from melatonin. Melatonin is just not for sleep. There's 28,000 studies. And it's one of the best anti-cancer, anti-inflammatory. It's a powerful antioxidant. It actually strengthens your immune system. But now I take 10 milligrams chewable melatonin at dusk, sundown. And another 10 milligrams of a sustained release. So it releases over 7 hours. And this helps to reset your whole natural sleep cycle. This is my really best option. And over some periods of time, exploring and experimenting with what works best for me, this is really a very powerful way to get a good night's sleep. Now, and everybody should have melatonin. Our body should make melatonin. But because of a lot of restrictions in the the environment, pollution, chemicals, we don't produce the melatonin we should. So we take it. Our body would make it every day if it were a perfect body. 
there is also other choices. If you take somewhere between 125 milligrams to 250 milligrams of a complex concentrated plant, plant oil about an hour before bed. This is an hour before bed because this does not set the sleep cycle. So it's a combination of mandarin orange, lemon balm, ravensara, and lavender. Almost sounds good enough to eat. They're in soft gel capsules. And they are used to ease anxiety and relieve insomnia. And then angelica, an herb from Iceland, Angelica Archangelica. Usually 100 milligrams to 200 milligrams before bed to reduce nighttime bathroom trips, both for men and women. A lot of women and men get up through the night to go to the bathroom. And this Angelica Archangelica reduces the nighttime bathroom trips. Very effective. Now women, take the health of your heart seriously. Women are at a higher risk of heart disease. Previous research has shown women ages 55 and younger have about double the risk of in-hospital death from a heart attack versus men. A new study looked at whether men, excuse me, whether women are also more likely to need further hospital treatment after a heart attack versus men. And researchers followed almost 3,000 men and women treated in a hospital after a heart attack. About 30% of the participants were re-hospitalized in the year after their heart attack. Women were almost twice as likely to need a hospital treatment to recover and were almost twice as likely to need treatment for tissues not related to the heart, especially depression. Depression increases risk of heart disease by as much as 64%. So here are three steps to a healthier heart. Cut out sugar. Reduce your carbohydrates. Increase protein and fats. And you'll be healthier. Especially cardiovascular health. Studies have shown People with diets that are high in sugar, 20% of the glycemic index, were 50% more likely to have a heart attack or stroke or die. If they had a pre-existing condition such as diabetes or cancer, and 20% more likely to experience these if they had no pre-existing conditions. Now I'll get back to you on the three nutrients that can save your heart. But we're all out of time. It's time for us to, to close our program for the day, to sign off for today. But you know you can join me every weekend, same time, same station, for more health tips. You know, as you now have better quality of life, your health is a choice. So always choose well. It's your choice. Eat what you want, but based on your choice, right? You don't want to choose fast food, junk food, garbage. But please pray for this crazy, crazy world. God bless you, my friends. And God bless this great country.
Thank you for listening to Terry Talks Nutrition Weekly Show. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a review on your favorite podcast platform, including Apple, Google, and iHeartRadio.